All right, everyone, would you like to stand for the national anthem? Is that right? I want to say this right here, right now. I believe in God. I believe in God. Jay's spirit is alive and well. It is stronger than it's ever been. Believe it. He is here blessing us right here, right now. Don't feel bad for Jay. Guys, do not feel bad for Jay. I've felt his spirit since that horrible night on Saturday night. Too many times I was feeling bad for myself. I can't tell you how many times I was getting depressed. How many times I just wanted to lay in my bed and I can feel his spirit and I can see his beautiful smile. Do you guys know the smile I'm talking about? I can see it and I can feel it, guys. I'm telling you, I can feel it. The thing is, is every single time I start to get down on myself, I can feel him say, Joey, don't feel bad, get up. Get up and fight, ladies and gentlemen. We have to be encouraged by this and we gotta get up and fight for what we believe in. It's been a really difficult week for a lot of you guys, and I know that, and especially the family. It's not easy to do some of the things that we had to do this week. Luke, Luke is, is, is his best friend, his brother, okay, business partner, all right? And what happened is he gets that phone call, and he probably one of the hardest things he's ever had to go through, the worst news he's ever gotten was that they, they took his brother's life, right? Hardest thing he's ever had to go through, and he didn't want to, it was already hard enough, to hear that news and on top of that he has to deal with all these people slandering his name and going after and attacking his, his brother, right? And so he did what he had to do. He had the courage, okay, while he's going through this horrible situation, he had the courage to get up and go out there in front of the cameras, okay? To go out there and stand up for Jay and stand up for the life that he lived. It wasn't easy for him. Can I get an amen? That's the thing. You had Chandler. Chandler was there that night, okay? Chandler was there that night. Chandler doesn't want to be in front of the cameras. He's there, he has to see his brother go down, and as you see, he had to, to roll over Jay and to see him, begging for him to get up, begging him for him to get up. And Chandler, okay, Chandler didn't want to go out there and to stand up for Jay in front of these cameras, but he had the nerve to go out there on national television and to stand up for Jay and who he really is. Let's hear it for Chandler.
for, the, for those of you who know Chandler, you, I guarantee you, he did not want to go in front of that camera. I, I heard from a source that he was ha almost having a panic attack before he went up there, but he still did it. It was an important thing. This is the thing, guys, we got to fight. We got to fight and we got to get up. We don't have time to feel bad for ourselves. We don't have time to feel bad for anybody because Jay's not a victim and we are not victims. We are not victims. We have to fight as hard as we can, but I want to say this right here, right now. I don't want to see one person, I don't want to see anybody encourage any acts of violence in the name of Jay. I don't want to see one person going to Portland and create one act of violence in the name of Jay. Not one. Anybody who goes down there and does that, they're not doing it for Jay, they're doing it for themselves because I know that Jay would not want that. Jay wants us to stand up for what we believe in, but he does not want any more violence, guys. He does not want any more violence. This is the thing about the community. I guarantee you that Jay's smiling on all of us right here, right now, not because we're here for him, but because we're here to support one another. One of the things that I've had to learn through the hard way going through 2020 has been hard for all of us, okay? One of the lessons that I've learned, and I'm trying to encourage people, is that we, we don't have anybody that's gonna help us, guys. The, the media screwed us over, all right? The politicians are running and hiding. We don't have anything. All we have is each other in this community right here, right now. And Jay was, Jay's for that. Jay was for that. He believed in that. He believed in that message, guys. He believed in that message. He went all around with us, all over Clark County, trying to, trying to fight for people's rights because it doesn't matter how horrible things are in this country, the division, the hatred, all that. No matter, no matter how dark the time may seem, when he would show up, he would lighten us up. He would build the morale. He would make things better. Just his presence alone, and that's what the community is about. And so I want to thank each and every single one of you for being here today. Been thinking a lot of, been thinking a lot this week about Jay and how to respond to this, okay? And we got two directions that we can go, okay? We got two directions that we can go to respond to what had happened to him and the way that they slandered him and the way that, that they've been trying to run his name through the mud, okay? One of the things we have a decision to make, you can either allow this to make you more courageous in your life, okay? You can make that decision or you can allow that death to further you live in a life of fear, okay? I don't know about you guys, but I'm sick and tired of us living a life of fear, guys. I am sick of it. The thing is, the thing is about living a life of fear, it's okay to be afraid, guys. It's okay to be afraid, but you cannot live a life of fear. You gotta walk straight through fear. You gotta walk straight through it to do what you believe in. You have to do it the exact same way that Jesus did. Jesus walked straight into death. Even though he was crying the night before, he walked straight into death like a warrior, ladies and gentlemen, for each and every single one of you. Each and every single one of you. You gotta ask yourself how much faith do you got, guys? We're gonna have some hard times going on in this country coming up real soon. Use Jay as an inspiration. You gotta ask yourself what your faith is. Ask yourself what your faith is. You may believe in God, but do you have faith in the plan that God has for you if you live the destiny that he has for you? Use Jesus as an example. Use Jay as an example. Both of them walk straight into death. Listen to this, listen to this. You gotta ask yourself, what are you willing to sacrifice? What are you willing to sacrifice? If you are willing to walk straight to death, okay? That, if you're willing to walk straight to death, that means you're willing to face all the other fears that come along the way, okay? Are you worried about what people think about you, okay? Jay didn't, Jay didn't, okay? Are you guys worried about them slandering your name or attacking you? Because I'm telling you, you can hide for a little bit, guys. You can hide for a little bit, but it's gonna come to your doorstep. It's gonna to come to your doorstep sooner or later. If you, see, if you see them knocking down your neighbor's door, you cannot hide in your house because they're coming to your door next, guys. Do you understand that? Yeah. We gotta stand right now. Yeah. So here's what you gotta ask yourself. Do you want to use his death to, to live further in fear or do you wanna use his life as an example to live a courageous life? Because Jay was one of the most courageous people that I've ever met in my entire life, guys. My entire life. And I look up to him 
Doesn't matter what situation we were in. I always feel like I can keep it cool. Doesn't matter what situation that we were in, Jay was always calm and always had that smile on his face even in the middle of anarchy. Here's one of the most important parts. There's a decision that you gotta make, okay? You can allow Jay's death, either increase the hatred in your heart, okay? Or you can use his life as an example to increase the love in your heart. I know that there's a lot of hatred building up. I'm sure there's a lot of people in this crowd here today that has been struggling with that hatred. I'm sure the family's been struggling with that temptation, okay? I can't tell you it was confusing for them to kill Jay and then spew hatred towards the family or spew hatred towards you guys. It was a confusing thing for me to understand and comprehend. And I've been through a lot in the last few years, but I've never felt a bigger temptation in my life to begin to hate. But we can't do that. We cannot do that, guys. Because hatred is a disease, it will infect you, and it will go from one person to the next and the next, and it will do nothing to heal this country, guys. It will do nothing. This, this morning I got a couple, tech. first of all I want to say, the, the support has been overwhelming. So it's been way, way bigger than the hatred. But I want to talk about this morning, I got a random text message and, and, and this guy texted me, trying to make fun of Jay, trying to make fun of him. And I felt, I felt that temptation, I felt that thing come up into my heart, that, 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 that the wanting to hate, right? That darkness starting to take over, starting to take over. And I just, all of a sudden I just said, you know what, I forgive him. I said, Satan has no, no home here in my heart. No home, no home. And I let it go. I let it go. And it's something, that, it's something that we have to do all the time. All the time, it's a constant thing. But the thing is, the beautiful thing about that moment in time, okay, that moment in time is that person no longer had power over me. They don't have any power over me. I'm gonna live my life as, as strong, as powerful as I possibly can, and I will not allow these people to drag me down to their level, guys. We gotta do that. We gotta rise up and transcend. We will not be at their level. We have to forgive as much as we possibly can. It doesn't mean that we excuse. It doesn't mean that we forget, but we have to forgive. I wanna remind you that Jesus, the way that they treated him, Okay? The way that they humiliated him and tortured him and the way that they nailed him to that cross, right? And he still found it in him to forgive all of us. To forgive all of us. We gotta use that as an example. Let's forgive and heal country guys. Let's forgive and heal. I wanna finish off with something that's very important to understand. Okay? It's very important to understand. They got everything in this world against us, okay? They got everything going up against us. They got the giant social media companies, they got the media, they got all the politicians, they got all the money, they got everything going up against us, but it doesn't matter, guys. It doesn't matter if you fight for what you believe in, okay? If you fight for what you believe in, God will have your back. He will have your back. It doesn't matter what they throw at us. It doesn't matter. The only thing that evil can do is get you to be so discouraged that you quit, then evil wins. Do you understand that? But if you keep getting up and you keep fighting, it doesn't matter what they throw at you. They, they can have my Facebook, I don't care. You think God doesn't have bigger plans than Facebook? Come on now. These multi-billion dollar corporations got nothing on the plan that God has for this country as long as we stand up and fight as hard as we can, guys. As hard as we can. Keep the faith, keep the hope, do not be discouraged. Amen. We are gonna go through some hard times, but we can do it if we keep if we keep going forward, okay? We get knocked down, it doesn't matter. We get knocked down, it doesn't matter, you just get up, you just get up. And I'm here to tell you, and I'm here to declare right now, the only way that we've been able to keep going forward, the only way we've been able to keep our head up is through our faith in Jesus Christ. God bless each and every single one of you. Chandler, where you at? Get up here. Chandler, where you at? Come on, bud. Here he is. Let's hear it for Chandler. Come on now. Come on now.
man, what a turnout. Uh, it's incredible. I guess I probably expect nothing less. Jay was such a, such a guy. He just brought everybody together. Uh, I recently had the privilege, just last night actually, of uh, going to a memorial for him where I met people who had known him for 5, 10, 15, 20 years. Uh, much longer than I had. I only had the privilege of knowing him for about a year. But I tell you what, I knew, I felt like I'd known him my whole life. Uh, man, what an example. A um, couple of things I learned. One thing is that the men that I got to know over the year, or the course of the year, was exactly who he was for the last 20. He was a unifier, he was, he was compassionate, he was loving, he was caring. He was the first guy to buy you a drink if you were having a bad day. Man, what an example. It's, he's a hard guy to lose. Man. Sorry, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> the other thing, the other thing aside from him, always being who he was, always being honest, always being true, is that he brought people together. He brought so many different kinds of people together. I met leftists and rightists. I met uh, Asians and black people and Latinos and, and any manner of different races and, re and even religions and, and perspectives. And everybody got along with Jay. Everybody got along with Jay because he was about bringing people together. He's about unifying people. Jay wasn't a violent man. <laughs> Jay was all about peace. Jay was about love. And every single one of you that came out here tonight to come together in solidarity with Jay, I appreciate you. I appreciate you more than you can know. This, this here, this is beautiful. Jay is looking down on us right now and he's, he's laughing and he's crying and he's having a good time. He, he's, uh, this is exactly what he would want to see. Everybody coming together. I'm gonna start running out of things to say. I appreciate all of you so much for coming out here in support of my friend who is just a, a pillar of a man, somebody I aspire to be like. Not many people get to meet their heroes, let alone hang out with them, spend time with them, know who they really are deep down. And uh, I was so fortunate and I think I thank God I had that opportunity and I thank Jay for being the man that he was. So thank you all for everything. Okay, right here we have uh, Michelle Dawson. Michelle Dawson uh, <laughs> loved Jay. <laughs> with a, a lot of passion. Um, I don't know if you guys seen the, the video of Jay riding around on his uh, um, electric board wearing a full body rabbit suit. Have you seen that? I've seen the videos. That was for her birthday. He pulled up to her birthday <laughs> at the front door and we're like, who is this guy? He's gonna murder all of us. Um, but uh, we wanted Michelle to say a couple things because she really, she had a lot of love for him and, and, and knew him real well. So let's hear from Michelle. I miss Jay. I miss Jay. I miss those moments of being able to call him and say, hey, I'm having kind of a rough day, you know? Can you talk to me? Can you help me? But I want everybody to turn and look at your neighbors because look at this beautiful gift right now, today, that he has given us. Everybody coming together in honor of Jay. This is beautiful and this is what he would want. This is absolutely what he would want. Um, I. I met Jay at a Patriot Prayer Rally, and if you know Jay, he always kind of stood in the back, kind of observing, watching, watching everybody's back, and there was one day he just was standing out to me, and I just said to myself, man, you need to go up and shake his hand. He is part of your Patriot family, and you need to know who he is. I walked up and I introduced myself, and he said, hi, I'm Jay, and I said, Jay, nice to meet you, and he said, I'm Jay, like 10th letter of the alphabet, Jay. Yeah. 
that's how we know him is by Jay. Um, he was the kind of man that you literally could just call and he would be there. We started talking about life and about where our adventures has taken us. And I really got to know him. And when this Corona stuff started and they started shutting churches down, I was holding a prayer rally and a prayer circle in Yakult every Sunday. Jay would drive from Portland to Yakult to come up and support my prayer circle. He was absolutely amazing. And the day that he showed up in the bunny suit on my birthday, tensions were kind of high. There were some things that went on in my world that had made security at my house a little, a little high. We were all on extra alert that day. And to see a seven foot bunny walking through my yard, trying to get through my gate, I was like, babe, there's, there's a seven foot rabbit walking through the yard trying to get through the back gate. So my husband being him, you know, he goes running to the backyard and he gets to the back gate. Well, Jay couldn't get in the back gate. So he comes to the front door and without even hesitation, man, I whip my door open and I rip that mask up and he just started laughing. And I'm like, Jay, what are you doing? Like, really? That was just who he was. And that birthday, let me tell you, that birthday is by far one of my favorite birthdays that I will ever have. And I'm sad. I'm sad though that rabbit will never come walking to my door again. And I'm sad that August 29th, I was watching a live video of what was going on in Portland like I did every night. I was watching the moment those two shots rang out. Those two shots that have been heard around the world. I never did imagine that just turning on a live video I would watch the execution and murder of our friend. We've been robbed. I've had anger in my heart. I'm not gonna lie about that. I'm sure each and every one of you has felt the anger and the rage. And I kinda had to have a reality check. Because I know Jay would not want that. Jay wants this. This is what he wants. And I really encourage the media I really want to encourage the media that is here today and the media that continues to slam him and slander his name. Get it right. Get it right. Jay was not a Nazi. Jay was not a white supremacist. Jay was not a fascist. Jay was a proud American. Jay loved his country. Jay loved President Trump. And by God, Jay loved Patriot Prayer. Get it right! Get it right! Get it right! Every one of you sitting right here right now, I encourage you and I want you to give him the justice that he deserves. Because our friend should not be murdered. Our friend should not be dead. He was amazing! And I'm angry that the media wants to ruin his name, but by God, Patriot Prayer, and every one of you standing here today, we will fight! We will fight to keep his good name! Who deserves justice right now? Say it again and say it louder! Jay's birthday was yesterday. And Thursday night, he also gave us a gift. He gave us a gift to start the justice that he so deserves. Yeah. I want to end with a USA chant because that's what Jay would want. Let's go. USA! 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 USA!
Look at all everybody that you've brought together. Look at the miracle right now. I want to say God bless all of you patriots and God bless his family. And we all need to make sure that we do make it, make it some way, somehow to reach out to his family because he deserves to see every one of your faces that we've brought together. God bless you all. That's a hard one to follow. <laughs> um, I'm standing up here reading for uh, Chrissy Banks. She wanted to share a message with you all. I met Aaron Joseph Danielson 10 years ago when I was 25 years old. He was the second love of my life, and despite our differences, we remained good friends until, until the day he died. Stand before you today because I want you to know who the man Jay really was. He was a man who loved and cherished his family. He was a man who loved and respected his friends. He loved you for who you were on the inside, not the color of your skin, where you came from, or what language you spoke. He loved animals and nature. He believed in hard work and dedication. He believed in the Constitution and the freedom of speech. And because of his beliefs, he was hunted down on the streets of Portland Saturday night and murdered. I ask you to stand with me and demand the violence to stop. I ask you to stand with me and demand peace. I believe Martin Luther King Jr. once said, hate cannot drive out hate, only love can do that. You will be loved and missed, Jay. Thank you. Patriots! Look around you right now. Dishonest media, I'm talking to you specifically, but I won't look at you. I see patriots of all colors. I see exactly what Aaron Danielson was about. I see black people, I see Asian people, I see Hispanics, I see white people. I'm just wondering if we're gonna get that as well, because I know you're gonna have your own narrative. I'm going off script a little bit because, you know, when I hear Joey speak and I hear all these great people speak, does that sound like somebody that deserves to get his Facebook taken down? Does that deserve like some, does that sound like someone that's hateful, that's calling for the name of Jesus, that's calling for nonviolence? Does that sound like somebody that has hate in his heart? Anybody that came up, the, the people that have come up here before me, does it sound like they have any hate in their hearts? Because to me, media, it sounds to me like this is a peaceful protest. This is actually what a peaceful protest looks like. But I'm sure you'll have your own narrative and that's okay. We'll continue to fight. Good evening, fellow patriots. My name is David with Oregonians for Trump. Today we've gathered to celebrate a life that is the life of young Aaron J. Danielson. This incredible man was unjustly taken from us from the hands of evil. I could spend my time today to speak in anger. I could spend, I, I can ask you to join hands to fight back. We could justify Aaron's passing to help create an uproar like this like this uh, area has never seen, like the Northwest has never seen, like our nation has never seen. We could organize something that would make the unlawfulness going on downtown caused by our failed leaders in Oregon, Ted Wheeler and Kate Brown. We could organize something way more powerful than that, but we come here today out of love we come here today out of humbleness. If we were to do so, we'd be justified in doing so. However, in wrestling with the message I wanted to share today, one thought came to my head 
that with the mighty hand of justice also comes pain. I believe justice was served for Aaron's, Aaron's killer, but we still are left with the pain of Aaron's loss. The death of another does not fill the void that Aaron has left in our hearts and in our community. However, I think there are two things we could use to fill that void, and it's something Aaron knew very well and proudly stood for, and that is patriotism. Yeah. But more importantly, prayer. Let me start by saying just a quick prayer for all of us, and specifically the family and close friends of Aaron J. Danielson. Bow your heads, please. Jesus, we come to you today, Lord. Lord, a lot of times in our lives, things don't make sense. Things don't add up. We ask you why and why and why, Lord. But God, we understand that you have a purpose for each and every one of us, Lord. You have a purpose for everything that happens on this earth, Lord, because we've all, we already know what happens in the end. Jesus, we come before you today, Lord. Like Joey said, we have so many things against us. But Lord, you are bigger than all of those things. You are bigger than Facebook. You are bigger than Instagram. You are bigger than Twitter. You are bigger than the dishonest media. And Lord, we ask that you just give us strength and guidance today, God, that we would look to you in times like this, in times of adversity, that we would look to you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Patriotism. Ladies and gentlemen, let me explain to you why patriotism should have a place in your heart and how it can lead to healing. Adlai Stevenson said, patriotism is not short, it's not quick outbursts of emotion, but the tranquil and steady dedication of a lifetime. I like to consider the life of a patriot as very one of someone that is very aligned with that of a Christian. In both circumstances, these individuals are called to be different. They are driven by a cause much greater than themselves. They are selfless. They are relentless to their goal. They love their country. They are lifelong servants humbled by the task put before them. This was the life that Aaron chose. He was someone, that someone who stood up for what he believed in and bared the weight of that calling like many of us are doing right now. And while a patriot's passion is his country, a Christian's passion is our God. Rarity is, is found when a soul has the ability to blend the two. You may be asking me how, how patriotism in our hearts may aid with the healing of our wounds. And I would argue that patriotism leaves little room for grief because in order to be focused on the cause, saving this great nation, we cannot be selfish. Aaron was not a selfish person. Yes, there's a time for grief, but patriots like Aaron would want us to linger, wouldn't want us to linger, linger in this sorrow. He would want you to be a true patriot like he was, to find that tranquility of heart and press onward. Yeah. The second tier of Aaron's passion was prayer. And boy, does this nation need some. I'm sure the, the dishonest media probably got up because they got what they needed, but even they need prayer, believe it or not. There's a great storm brewing in our country, guys. That's no secret. You can see it around you. You can see it every time you turn on the TV. And only, only God can deliver us from any distress that comes our way. I don't want us to forget that. My desired haven and that of Aaron was a country who put God first again. We must pray. We must pray for our president. We must pray for our leaders in Washington. We must pray for the dishonest and biased media. We must pray for godly role models for our children. Cardi B ain't one of them. We must pray for our teachers, our doctors, our police. And yes, we must pray for our enemies. Prayer is a powerful weapon and one that must be yielded daily, guys. It, 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 the power of prayer is incredible. Amen. Although I never had the pleasure of meeting Aaron personally, I believe you can know a person well based on how others speak of him. Aaron was well known in his community as a generous and hospitable person. He was known for greeting friends at the door 
with questions like, how do you like your steaks? I love that one. That tells a lot about a person. He was genuine in what he said. He was not faint at heart, and he wore the Patriot prayer garb proudly. Let us all don who Aaron was today and carry on his legacy, guys. Aaron's passing is a reminder of the evil we face in our communities, in our state, and in our country. We must continue to separate ourselves. Joey said it perfectly. We must con continue to separate ourselves from this evil and be the better side with God as our guidance. Aaron affected people from all walks of life. Democrat, Republican, left, right, black, white, brown. I can't think of a better example of the kind of people Jesus has called us to be. Never let your heart harden. Never let hate consume you. But use frustration as a chance to draw closer to God and pray even harder and fight even harder for our country. Aaron understood this. It's what made him such an extraordinary person and liked by all. Aaron, we miss you, but we will never forget you, and we will fight even harder. To his family and friends, thank you for supporting such a man who, who has given us now something to look, look towards as an example. Guys, we have, we, our, our country is, is at a pivotal moment. Be close with those around you. There's no, there's no time for, for division within us. We must fight together. We have to stay together. But we have to do it through love and through God. We love you guys. Thank you. Okay. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to finish off with something, but before I do that, um, I want to remind you guys that there's a lot of food here, okay? Make sure you eat it, okay? Um, after I finish saying what I'm going to say real quick, we're going to be playing some music. Be good for you guys to hang out, talk, whatever, meet people, um, do your thing, eat your food, all right? And then at 8 o'clock tonight, okay? And I know that a lot of you guys won't be coming back, and that's totally fine, but at 8 o'clock tonight, right over there um, where the concrete is, the brick over there, uh, Carol's organizing a, a uh, candlelight vigil. And so we'd like to see a lot of you guys out there. We're going to be doing some chalk and um, just kind of doing something for Jay. So love to see any of you guys who can show up out there later tonight. Okay, so, um, and, and first of all, thank every, I want to thank all of you guys for showing up here today. Like, it means a lot. It means a lot to Jay and his family. I want to thank everyone that pitched in, everyone that, that, that donated, everyone that helped, all the hands and all the help. So thank you guys so much for that. Really appreciate it. Really appreciate it. I want, I want, appreciate it. <clears throat> now, I'm not gonna get political here, okay? I'm not gonna get political. I'm not gonna get political, okay? I'm just gonna speak the truth. I want Ted Wheeler to apologize to the family. I want him to apologize for the family. It's the least he can do. It is the least thing he can do if he has any sort of humanity within his heart left at all, okay? Because the way that he went up on that press conference the day after Jay was murdered and he couldn't even take one second to apologize to his family for the fact that in his city, in his lawless city, okay, because of his policies, Jay was murdered, okay? He's built a city of lawlessness. They've built a culture of lawlessness. They've allowed them to get away with whatever they want, okay? And they've They've built up the, the lies that there's some sort of far-right extremist, white supremacist going on, okay? They built up these lies and all that together, they killed an innocent man, and I'm here to tell you, they didn't even know who Jay was. They just judged him, okay? So we want apology from Ted Wheeler, at the very least. You guys agree with that? And again, that's not about politics. I don't care if you're Republican or Democrat, everyone should feel that same way if you have a heart. The other thing, Kate Brown needs to apologize to the family and her response and calling him a white supremacist. This is, 
This is not a Republican versus Democrat thing. This is about truth versus lies. And the truth is, Jay was not a white supremacist. And if you are actually against white supremacy, then you should never support someone falsely claiming it, ever. If you truly believe in Black Lives Matters, we want Kate Brown to apologize to the family. That's the least thing that she can do. If she was as hard, if she, that was, the way that she talked about Jay is a million times harder than anything that she ever said about the people rioting in Portland every single day. Can you believe that? Kate Brown was harder on the man who was murdered than the people who murdered him. That's what we're living at in this country right now. We gotta wake up, guys. We gotta wake up and come together, and I'm calling on all liberals, I'm calling on all Black Lives Matters leaders, I'm calling on anybody who has a heart in the city of Portland to stand up and speak out against what they did to Jay. Yeah. Speak out not only about the fact that they took his life as if that wasn't enough, but speak out against the people going on bullhorns and celebrating his death. That's not okay. What does that have to do with helping black lives? I'm calling on leaders in Portland. Obviously there's no leaders that, that are politicians, but I'm, I'm calling anybody in Portland that has influence, where is your voice on what happened to Jay? Where's your voice? For those of you in Portland, I want to remind you, Jay is one of your own. Jay lived in Portland. He had a business in Portland, and these guys murdered him in cold blood, and nobody in Portland is standing up for him, except for us right here. And God bless all of you guys for having the courage to show up here today. I'm sure some of you were scared, but you had the courage to show up. So I'm making a call, okay, for all of you guys watching on here, all of you in Portland, okay, all you leaders who have a heart, speak up and stand up for what is right, and stand up for justice. God bless all of you.